A year after one of the worst oil spills in U.S. history, the verdict is still out on how well the recovery is going for the Gulf Coast. You see that the mangroves here are fairly healthy. You didn't see a lot of dead standing mangrove, not a lot of brown, gray. On the surface, the Gulf looks pretty much like it did the day before the Deepwater Horizon oil rig exploded last April. But for weeks afterward, millions of liters of oil spewed into the Gulf of Mexico, leaving a sticky, molasses-colored coating on sensitive marshlands, wildlife, and anything else that get caught in its path. Naturally occurring oil-eating microbes help clean up the spill, along with chemical dispersants used by BP. But some scientists say the long-term effects of the oil spill are only hidden from view. John Hosevar, a marine biologist with the environmental group Greenpeace, charges that most of the oil is still in the Gulf today. It's in the water, it's on the sediment, it's on the seafloor. Um, a lot of it's washed up into the wetlands and it's still there. It's still being eaten by marine life today. A map at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration keeps track of the Gulf Coast recovery. Lisa DePinto is with NOAA's Office of Response and Restoration. She says for the amount of oil that spilled out into the Gulf, more than 4 million barrels, the impact could have been much worse. For some areas like the shoreline, I would certainly say that for our uh, degree of oiling that we've observed in the, the shoreline along the Gulf states, that I think we feel like it could have been a lot worse. And what we're seeing is a result of the fact, I think, that we applied dispersants. So now what's happening in the water column and more offshore is an area that I think we're still investigating pretty hard. Assessments about fish and shrimp in the Gulf are similarly upbeat. The seafood safety testing that I've seen has indicated uh, everything is, is looking good. And, you know, I think it's a message that we want to put out there is that, that the seafood testing program, which was extremely rigorous and developed, and parts of it were developed specifically for some of the constituents seen in this incident, that we've gotten uh, good results and that I, I think we're seeing a safe uh, seafood system down there. Pinto cautions, though, the Gulf's recovery is far from complete, and the full effects of the BP oil spill on the Gulf's fragile ecosystem may not be known for years to come. We're looking at things we've probably never looked at before uh, as a result of an oil spill, so we're looking at things in the offshore deep water environment as well as up through the water column and all along the shorelines. It's going to take several years for us to be able to understand uh, where we are now relative to what was baseline prior to the spill. One disturbing trend this year has been an increase in the deaths of infant dolphins. But DePinto says that's still an active part of NOAA's investigation, and they haven't made any determination about the causes of the deaths. In the meantime, NOAA continues to monitor and research all possible effects of the oil spill. Our job is to, yes, conduct, lead the conduction of the scientific studies that will help us understand what the long-term or short-term uh, environmental injuries are. And then ultimately what we're trying to do is figure out what types of uh, restoration would bring back those lost resources. So that's the ultimate goal of our process. To help aid recovery in the region, President Obama issued an executive order last October, establishing the Gulf Coast Ecosystem Restoration Task Force. The White House says it will not only address the damage caused by the BP oil spill, but also the Gulf's long-standing ecological decline and begin moving toward a more resilient Gulf Coast ecosystem. I'm VOA's Rebecca Ward for Going Green.